coming from webinars. So in this tutorial, what we are going to learn is we're going to learn how to identify smart money using market profile. So this is more of a continuation of the last week session, right? Last week, every week we do conduct session on uh, a particular topic uh, every Saturday. So this week we are talking about uh, how I can identify uh, smart money using market profile structures. We're going to look into very, uh, very detail into the structures is what we're going to learn here. So just give me a quick uh, uh, idea about whether the audio and video quality is good enough. Just simply type yes if the audio and video quality is good enough so that I can have a fair idea. All right, thank you, Pankaj, uh, Bhupati, uh, Dedi, Rahul. Mark and Dea, Sanjay, Kajendra, Srinivasa, Amit, uh, Shiva, and uh, Ravinder, and everyone. So, without any further delay, right, so we'll quickly kick start with the session here. So, uh, if in case if you are facing any audio or video issues, then it's highly recommended to use Chrome or Firefox browser because that is where Webinars provides a better experience on these browsers, and it's highly recommended to use these browser for better learning experience. So uh, last week we learned about the very basics of uh, market profile. What is value area? What is point of control? Now, as I said, in today's agenda, we're gonna discuss a lot about the basics of profile structure. Now from that profile structure, what I can understand. And along with that, how I can make use of those profile structure when building trading strategies and how to identify a new money or old money from the profile structure importance of the value area why value area is so important and uh, does value area based strategies works so some people there are many traders right once they started learning market profile they'll be trading uh, value area high breakout then i want i want to go long value area low breakdown uh, i i want to go short does that kind of uh, momentum trading will it work does that kind of breakout trading will it work or not we're going to look into that and of course, one of the strategy that we're going to learn, one of my favorite strategy also, it's called point of control based rejection strategy. It's more of an intraday technique. We're going to learn about that. And uh, of course, Nifty and Bank Nifty Outlook that we're going to talk at the end of the session. So we'll try to understand uh, uh, profile structure. Before to that, we're going to learn different types of market participants. We know, right, the market contains majorly, we can, if we classify any trader or investor, they will be mostly coming under this category. Intraday trader or scalper, uh, generally, they are the one who don't carry forward any position. So any uh, buy or sell, they will settle down the same day itself, right? So they don't uh, carry forward their position for the next day or next week. Short-term traders, they're also traders, but they are they typically, they hold the position for uh, anywhere between three to 10 days. There's no rough definition, uh, but we can say like uh, somewhere around three to 10 days, if somebody is holding, even if 15 days, they are holding also, we can consider as a short-term trader. Means short-term traders today, I might go long. Tomorrow I may change my opinion. Tomorrow I will go short also. So I will not give any commitment to the position. So if my technical analysis is saying like, I want to go long, I will go long. If my technical analysis is going sh uh, saying short, then I'll try to short the markets. Then comes the intermediate trader. So intermediate traders are uh, short-term investors, typically mostly funds bigger funds, mutual funds. A lot of mutual funds, they belong to the intermediate trader category. Many funds, they hold their positions. Uh, majority of the funds, right? They hold their position for up to three months. Very few positions, even mutual funds, not even mutual funds, even Warren Buffett, he closed his, most of his position less than six months. So think about that. Even people like Warren Buffett, they are intermediate traders. Uh, probably very few stocks like... Uh, uh, Coca-Cola or some stocks, they will give commitments. So that is those kind of people is what we call them as a long-term investor. Of course, a lot of people in India like uh, Ramesh Damani and of course the late uh, uh, Rakesh Junjunwala. Though they are primarily intermediate traders, some stocks they will be keeping it for five years, 10 years, 15 years. Right? So if uh, there is no technical definition over here, so anything more than six months, or anything more than a year, you can say like uh, they are uh, long-term investors. Now, why I'm talking about here is like uh, different people have a different level of commitment. So when I'm talking about long-term investor, they when they are coming in, they give very big commitments. They also buy in a large quantity also when big traders are coming and investing. When they big, for example, 
sometime back right so singapore government they came and uh, invested in uh, government singapore government they came and invested in uh, bharti airtel a company like bharti airtel a couple of thousands of crores so when they are investing they are sticking with that company for a very long period a big money and then they will give a commitment for the next 10 years or maybe next 20 years that is the kind of vision the long term players they will be having so they are not like traders right they don't change their opinion very frequently now why this is important is like this is very very important when you are studying the structures so keep this in mind so that we can understand what kind of traders we are competing with so now let's talk about uh, types of market structure at a very basic level at a very fundamental level any market profile can be classified into two kinds of things two kinds of structure one is a balanced structure a balanced structure means mostly a structure which is made of sideways markets a structure which is made of a sideways market something like this if this is a balanced market so we can call this an, uh, a balanced market rotational market sideways markets so in market profile, we don't use the word sideways, rather we use the terminology called the balanced market, nothing much. Imbalanced market, which is nothing but a trending markets. So imbalanced markets are like trending markets. So you know, right, last couple of days, uh, Nifty has been trending heavily. In fact, back Nifty is like uh, super trending. So we can say like markets are in imbalanced mode. But if you remember last uh, week, we talked about what are the chances that a market can go sideways? Any idea, like what are the chances? Like let's say 100 days, if I'm facing 100 days, out of 100 days, what do you think that intraday is likely to be in uh, sideways in terms of percentage? What do you think? You can just type it in the chat box so that we can have a fair idea. Yes, Vincent, Kasim, Kamala Kandan, almost everyone is coming to like 65 to 70 percent of the time. Market itself, 60 to 70 percent of the time, we're going to see that sideways markets, right? Of course, yes. So 60 to 70% of the time, we're going to see this structure, 60 to 70% of the time. Remember that, 60 to 70% of the time. 70% of time. We're going to incur balanced market. Balanced market, I, I can also call it in like, we have different names in the market profile. So some textbooks will be saying like a rotational market, means price is rotating back and forth if this price is rotating. So we call this a rotational market. Sometimes we even call this like a bracketing market. Bracketing markets means price is moving like a bracket. It is, it is like block between that upper range and lower range. Price keeps on oscillating between those ranges. Whereas the imbalanced mode is super rare. Like when it, it's not super rare, but still it has a decent probability, 30 to 35 percentage of the time. 30 to 35 percentage of the time. Of course, here it is not 60, it is supposed to be 65. So excuse me on that. Okay, let's see some, some of the examples of uh, balance into the market. Okay, look into this market. We are seeing an elongated structure. The structure itself, the pricing structure itself, very much elongated. Right. Um, if you could see that with the rotations are very small, center point is not bulged. Center point, if you could see, it is very much compressed. I hardly if I try to read the number of TPOs, maybe I'll zoom it and then I'll show it to you. If I zoom it towards those levels, you can see that hardly, if I count the number of letters, how many letters I'm able to see horizontally? A, F, G, H, and I. Only, I'm seeing only five TPOs. Each and every letter is called as a five TPOs, right? Only five TPO is what I'm seeing. That means what? Price is rotating, but the amount of rotation is very less. Means market is spending more time, very less time over here. So maybe every half an hour once, it is only touching five times, and then price is taking a direction, and then it is trying to find another uh, uh, balance over here. Another. So you can see in the structure there are two balance over here. This is one balance separated by a single print, J period single prints. It is followed by another balance. Right. So two different balance. But still, markets are having less rotation. Lesser the rotation, higher the imbalance mode it is. Now let's try to move on to the balancing structure. How Let's see how the balancing structure looks like. See, balancing structure is a very calm structure, very calm structure. Uh, generally, institutions, they love to play in this kind of markets. Why? 
because it's a highly organized market, highly orchestrated market. You know the meaning of orchestration, right? So the way they are, uh, you know, the guy, the guy will be coming and orchestrating, and the musicians will be playing the tune according to the how the orchestra is uh, steering them. If they, if the orchestra want to play with a high pitch, the musicians will play it. So the same thing happens in the markets also. When there is a strong institutional participation, and it is also a rational markets, calm markets, no urgency, no strong news. It's a regular day. It's a regular day, so I'm an institution, I want to accumulate or I want to distribute in the markets. So what I will do, I will not be in a hurry. As an institution, I will not be in a hurry. So I'll be slowly buying in the markets. I'll be slowly putting limit orders and then I look for an expectation to fill. I'm not in a hurry to buy at all. If I'm an institution, why I should be in a hurry unless there is the information is going to be sensitive. If at all there is no sensitive, if, let's say it's a Monday is going to be a yet another casual day. Maybe I'll also do my business on a daily basis very casually, right? But let's say something like events are happening, demonetization. Our last couple of days, you see that the Fed announcement is there and it's triggering waves across the markets. Globally, all the markets are selling off. So those are the places, long-term players will be on a highly alert mode. I mean, not only long-term players, big traders, big traders, big investors, everyone will be on the alert mode. Because things are happening. When Russian war tensions are there, every trader is there on the edge of the seat. Right? But those kind of days, we'll be seeing a completely different structure. So what, what is this kind of structure? You see that it's completely calm. Why? How I'm saying that it's completely calm? This is what it's a rational thing is. Market going sideways is the most rational thing where institutions can do more business, more trades they can do when market goes sideways. Why? Because this is a highly orchestrated market. We are seeing a very clean bell curve shaped structure. There are no absolutely no emotions. Here also, if you could see, even though the length of the profile is very big, it is still balanced. It's still balanced. Still, we are seeing that uh, a clean uh, orchestrated bell curve structure. Now, why it is so important? It is important because these are the places short-term traders, big traders are coming and playing. They're not investors. Investors also might play in that particular day. They would have been accumulated or distributed. But along with that, Mostly, a set of trader, we call them as a market maker. They're also quite, quite a smart trader. So they're building their inventories. Those are the days you, you can very easily, we can quickly understand that. So these are the places we can get a fair idea about what smart money is doing. They accumulate. Traders also, they accumulate. There are certain traders, we can call them like a short-term traders. They're institutions. For example, a trader who is dealing with some 5,000 lots of Nifty. They don't buy it in one single price. They don't sell it in one single price. When the size of the trading is very big, they split the trades throughout the day or they split the trades throughout the week so that they can acquire at a lower, cheaper price and they may be able to sell at a higher price. They need more time to enter also. They need more time to exit also. Sometimes they may exit when markets are crashing down. They don't bother about anything. They simply go for a fire sale. The institutions I'm talking about. So if you, if the structure is such a balanced mode, right? these are like, if you would have seen the markets from an intraday perspective, it will be dull, boring price action. Hardly nothing will be moving on there. Volumes will be very less at many locations. Volume will be dried out. Not many people will be showing enthusiasm in the markets. But those are the places, slowly, steadily, the smart money will be doing business around those levels. They will be smart money will be accumulating. Either they'll be accumulating longs or they may be accumulating shorts also. So, but look over here. These kind of days will be like, it will be centered. They will be having an, like a magnet. The point of control will be acting like a magnet. Price goes up, again comes back to the magnet. Again goes down, again come back to the magnet. Again goes up, come back to the magnet. Again goes down, come back to the magnet. Goes up, come back to the magnet. So that is how they'll be rotating throughout the center point. Now, this itself happens majority of the time. This is, the, this is something which happens in a low level market. You can find it very frequently. Now, this kind of structure is what we call as a symmetrical structure. 
So this kind of structure we call as what? Symmetrical structure. Symmetrical. A very important one that we are dealing with uh, rational traders for the day. And they like to do business with uninformed traders. A smart money, they like, love to do with the uninformed traders. If uninformed traders are small retailers, they are, they are demanding a buy. Let's say it's a very bullish day. So people are very much bullish. The retail traders are bullish. Naturally, these are the days they will be, they are forced to sell no matter what. The demand, the retail demand is on the buy side. It doesn't matter if they go and simply go and sell it to them. They accumulate shots on that particular day. However, imbalance structures, as I said, it's, it's something different. It shows that it is not only a day that we are dealing only with uh, short term traders. We're also trading with bigger time frame traders, like bigger time frame traders like uh, uh, intermediate traders or long term players. Somebody's involvement is there. Let me show you the last couple of days Nifty structure. Let me show you. So here is the last Friday structure. You can see that last Friday structure was very, very elongated, heavily elongated. How much elongated? Almost 350 point range. The, the range itself, high to the low range is almost 350 points. Here you can see the range here, how many point range. Last couple of days, right, the range has been expanding. Uh, last uh, Thursday, that is the expiry day, the range was 206. Last Friday, the range was 350. Now, by looking into the structure itself, I can say like this is like a huge liquidation. You can see that the stem, letter A period stem, price opened and it was a sharp cut in the markets. First one hour, market was selling and selling and selling and selling. Nothing, nothing itself. There was a heavy volume selling happened on last Friday. I don't know how much of you give importance to the volume. I do give uh, heavy importance to the volume. I was looking into the order flow charts as well. Order flow was saying like very huge volume activity was there. Like uh, maybe I, I'll, I'll show you like Nif uh, compared to Nifty, right? Bank Nifty was heavily cracking down. Bank Nifty, it was heavily cracking down, right? So it's kind of an... Uh, we look into that bank if they opened around uh, 40,500. It was kind of already, it was like 200, 250 points gap down. From there, it heavily went down to the downside. First half an hour, first half an hour, it was like a one way street. First half an hour, not only first half an hour, throughout the day it was like that only, but first half an hour was intensive selling with high volumes. How do I know that the volumes are higher? It's very simple. We can by looking into the bank if they, let me show you the vo volume activity, what happened in the auto flow. Even though a little bit of out of syllabus over here, I thought of showing it because it's very impressive. You can see that the big candles, these are delta candles, which shows that there is a heavy selling pressure is coming uh, at the opening itself. Right from the opening, the selling pressure was high. How high it is? You can look at the quantity. So first uh, couple of bars over here, almost every bar is a red color bar only. But if I look into the selling activity, selling activity was so intensive compared to the buying activity. So here we can see the selling activity on the left-hand side and buying activity on the right-hand side. Look at the lot size. The lot size is getting traded was very heavy. And uh, look at that, there are 2,378 lots of net sellers. Again, 2,542 lots of net sellers again. 1,256 lot of net sellers. Likewise, First half an hour, almost 11,000 lots of net selling happened, which I would say like by any means, strong momentum sellers, like kind of a smart money. They're clearly entering into the markets. So this is like, uh, this is not liquidation. This is not fresh, uh, I mean, old money. They're, they're not uh, closing their, uh, they're not closing their old longs. They are taking fresh shots over here. They're taking a fresh shots. By looking into the open interest, we can confirm that. So volume is saying like first half an hour, there was a heavy volume. How much big volume it is? By looking into the cumulative delta kind of metric, there are a lot of metrics which says like how bigger the volume is. Almost 11,000 lots of heavy intensive selling happen. I'm talking numbers in lots, right? So 11,000 lots of selling. By any means, it is intensive selling. 
if you're watching order flow charts very frequently, you know that, right? It is not a easy selling. So one way you can see that first half an hour itself, you can understand that, yes, the presence of long-term money is there, smart money is there. But how I can confirm from the open interest? Maybe if you are confirming from the open interest, you can get open interest only by end of the day only, the value will stabilize, right? Maybe if you are seeing from the end of the day, let me show you what we can get from the open interest. So here is the Nifty Future open interest data for the September series. Now listen very carefully. September series open interest is negative. Now what does a negative open interest mean? Price went down, open interest also down. What does it mean? End of the day, I'm seeing that. Friday evening, I'm seeing price went down, open interest is negative. What does it mean? What does it mean? Price is negative and open interest is also going down. Means unwinding. People are unwinding their longs. It's not a fresh shot. It is, it is not a fresh shot. But what is happening in the in the contract of in, the, in this particular contract, in the contract of September contract I'm talking about. You know, right? September contract is likely to expire. Listen very carefully. Listen, understand this. This is a very simple concept only, but a very powerful concept. Open interest is unwinding in the September month contract. But my order flow is saying like uh, OI is negative. That means what? It is longs are exiting. But my order flow is saying like uh, fresh money is getting uh, entering into the system. How I can uh, how I can understand that? Yeah, my structure is also, end of day structure is also elongated. But how I can confirm that? See, the thing is we are in the rollover period, right? So this could be a rollover also. People are closing the positions over here aggressively and they are entering. So they're closing their longs maybe, or they might be closing their uh, shots also. It doesn't, we, don't, we never know what happened in the September series, but because maybe it could be because of the rollover effect also. So look at that, what is the net change in the September series? It's hardly, how many lots has been changed? Only 1,340 lots, net change. Whereas if you look into the October series and November series, you'll get a fair idea. More activity is happening in the October contract. And look at that in terms of uh, huge open interest added over here compared to, compared to the September series. Now, what does it mean? It means price went down, open interest is positive only. It's not negative. It, it was negative in the September series. It is positive in the October series. More activity is happening in the October series. That means it is happening because of the rollover. So means people might be closing their uh, shots. They might be rolling over to uh, November series or people might be closing their positions. Some people might be genuinely closing their longs also, but more and more, open interest was rising. If you com combinedly, if you are looking into that, September, October, and November series, even November series also open interest added up. Even in the November series also, the you can see that a reasonable open interest added up. 12% change in the open interest. A reasonable numbers. Almost equal amount of uh, open interest activity is there. I mean, net change, uh, not much activity in uh, December series, but a reasonable amount of activity started happening in the October series. Right, which we cannot uh, simply deny that. Even though volumes are very lesser, op open interest has been uh, reasonably added over here. Change in open interest, if you look at it, on a net level, if I'm talking about over here. Right, so maybe this could be happening because of the rollovers only. Anyways, coming back to the topic. So overall, by looking into the open interest and by looking into the a structure, we can conclude that last Friday is a little bit of new money selling happened into the market. Not only that, whenever a fresh, whenever a fresh selling is happening in the markets, whenever an institutional selling is happening in the market, you can find one simple pattern. It's like all the sectors will be negative except the wicks. So if you go and look at the sector level activity, so here I'm showing you the sector level activity over here. You can see that almost every sector is down except the India VIX, right? Maybe some, some defensive counter like Pharma or FMCG might be went up. 
uh, by the end of the day, you seeing like almost every sector is negative. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry sector is negative over here, right? Almost every sector is almost down by one percentage, two percentage, or a little more than two percentage. So, who was only guy who is positive? Only India Vix is positive, almost nine point four four percentage. Now, what does it mean? Is like money. If it is uh, some sectors are positive, some sectors are negative. Maybe it could be a regular day. But last Friday is not a regular day. We have to understand. Almost every sector is going negative. Almost every sector is getting negative. Means money is. People are coming and selling across the counters. Who can do that? Can a retail trader like you and me can do that? Absolutely no. Can a short-term trader can do that? Some big trader can do that? Absolutely no. Only institutional traders who is coming and parking funds across the sector, they are pulling out their money. Right, so clearly what it says is like last Friday's activity, is more of an institutional long-term activity. As I said, institution might be involved in a long-term activity also. Sometimes they'll be involved in an intermediate activity also. Sometimes they might be even involved in the trading activity also. There are a lot of institutions like AF kind of institutions, hedge funds. In India, we don't call it as hedge fund, we call it as an AF funds. So they also at times involved in the institutional activity. Now, why tracking this activity is important because it helps you to position yourself short in a very short term. At least you have a fair idea what kind of trader I'm competing with. If you know, know this information, at least you will not go and trade against them. A very simple information, either by looking into the order flow or maybe looking into the structure, or at least by looking into the end of the day, by looking into the open interest, we'll get a fair idea. Everything is confirmed, same thing that you've been competing with a long-term player. In some other uh, market profile, they'll also call it as an OTF trader, other time frame traders. Other time frame traders are traders who are not intraday traders. Maybe we can call it as another time frame trader. They, they could be a short-term trader, they could be an intermediate trader, or they could be a long-term investor also. All right, so let's look into the some of the very interesting uh, profile structures. So, uh, typically, we can classify the profile structure into this category non trend day normal day normal variation day trend day double distribution day neutral day center neutral day extreme so these are little bit of outdated techniques and these are very basic concepts it's good to know kind of things but we cannot use strategies we cannot use it for strategies but we can understand what kind of trading activity has happened over here what kind of trader they entered on that particular day right so Beginners, they will be beginners who are learning market profile. They try to find what kind of day it is going to happen. But let me tell you, there's no point of looking into what kind of day will form because nobody can predict what kind of day is going to happen. We can only react to the information. We can react to the price information. But there are days by looking into the volume, yes, we can anticipate, yes, today can be a sideways. The possibilities are increasing. That we can look by, if you're having a sufficient screen time, we can definitely say that, yes, today is going to be a dull, boring day. And if you look into the volume activity, let, let's say last Friday I was looking into the volume activity. I was knowing that volume activity was very heavy. So right from the opening, I'm seeing uh, uh, bigger price actions. Right from the opening, the intensive activity was there. So I know that right from the opening, uh, we've been competing with the trade. We are not competing with only small, small traders. We've been competing with big investors. Right from the open, if you look into the volume information, even if you are plotting in very simple candlestick volume information also, at least you would have known that. The intensity of the volume was very bigger. If you try to plot the volumes on a 5-minute chart or a 15-minute chart, you could have been seen a very high volumes on last Friday. But it's good to know the profile structure because you will get a fair idea about how to deal with this kind of information. So let's start with a non-trend day. Non-trend day, when this kind of non-trend day will happen, I'll tell you. Non-trend days are mostly sideways price action, dull, boring days. Very, very low volume. Absolutely no volume. Very tight markets. If you are coming into the markets, right? End of the day, you'll be feeling like, oh my God, what is happening? Whether the market will move or not? Or is there any problem with my data? Is the data coming into, is, is the data, is there any issue in my, with the internet or not? Price will not move most of the times. Price will be stagnant most of the times. Mild uptick or mild downtick trading opportunity was very, very low over here. 
So we call it as a non-trend day because nobody was active on these kind of days. The day nobody will be dominant, nobody want to present in that markets. For example, no long-term activity will be there. No intermediate activity will not be there. Not much of an aggressive price action from the short-term activity will also not be there. Only from small choto moto traders, they will be coming and playing in the markets. So they don't have the muscle power to move the markets and market will be keep on rotating in some 20 point range or 30 point range, something like in Nifty I'm talking about. In Nifty terms, 30, 40 point range or 50 point range throughout the day, they'll be rotating. Or something like Reliance, probably entire day, let's say uh, what will happen if the entire day Reliance is moving between five points, up, down, up, down, up, down, five points range only. It will be very boring. Opportunities will be very, very small. Entire opportunity will be very small. Too much of rotation happens. Less volumes. So now, why this happens? Does it happen very frequently? If you ask me, absolutely no. This kind of things happens when a major news is expected. Let's say tomorrow there's going to be an important announcement from uh, Fed. So sometimes today market will be feeling a little bit nervous. So not many long-term players, they don't want to do any business much. So they'll be keeping lightweight. Bigger institutions will be keeping lightweight there. They don't want to participate because there's going to be an uncertainty. Nobody knows what is going to happen after a Fed announcement. Or nobody knows after a major economic release is going to happen. Or some geopolitical announcement is there. Or some announcement is coming from finance minister. Or any major announcement is expected from a prime minister or something like that. Or uh, some, some major announcement the government, the RBA governor is going to make. So anybody is going to make some major statement. Sometimes uh, the market will be feeling very nervous. Those times, none of the trader or none of the investors will be actively dominating the market. They'll not be actively moving the markets. So those are the places we'll be feeling that dull, boring, sideways price action. So it's more of a non-trend day, right? And then normal day. Normal day is a bit trendier day, but still we will be feeling the trend also. We'll be seeing the balanced activity also. So typically it will be happening like this. Most of the times we'll be seeing a bell curve shaped structure. If you see the, forget looking into the volume profile, I want you to focus only on the market profile only. Still you'll be seeing a highly organized price action. I'll tell you how this kind of balance happens at the center. You can see that the very big balancing happens at the center point. Now how it happens is like price opens, it moves up and then it does balancing. It does a balancing and then finally it will start later on again a rally could have been happened. The center point, if you would have seen, more trading activity would have been happened over here. Initially, price is re uh, rejecting the downside and they start moving on the upside to find liquidity, to find more trading activity. Initially, people are thinking like maybe uh, Nifty is worth trading more. So traders are pushing to the upside. Now, more and more traders are willing to conduct business over here. Maybe now more traders are willing to come and uh, sell, more traders are willing to buy at a certain level uh, because the prices keep going up. At a certain price, price, uh, price is not uh, impressive enough to attract more volumes over here. So here, if you could see, volumes are not more. Volumes are less over here. Why? Why volumes are less over here? Here, volumes are not much. Here, these are the places volumes are very, very thin. Why? Because people are not willing to or people are not willing to do more business around those levels. People are expecting a higher price. Higher price is getting factored in. Now, after some time only, there, maybe there are more, initially there are not much of a sellers. Only, only buyers would have been there. Aggressively, they push the markets up. After going up, maybe already there are the traders who are in profit, they might be willing to come and sell. Or who, who are already in deep losses, maybe they might be willing to exit at losses. So a higher price, is bringing more activity over here. A higher price is bringing more activity over here. That is how a traditional auction works. Initially, less people will be interested in an auction of the price going up. <coughs> As the price started to keep going up and up and up, more and more trading activity happens. More people will show interest here. More traders as a crowd, they show interest over here. And price further keeps going up. Now less and less people will be showing interest. And that is where the buyers will be losing their interest. 
because buyer will stop buying and sellers will take control of the markets. So these are the days you can see that the very clear cut information of the activity where more crowded trading activity is happening. It's very simple. At the start of the auction, start of the market, volumes are very less. We cannot say less volume, but the volume intensity is very big. But in terms of uh, horizontal volume activity is very less. Price is not spending more, more time over there. Whereas once the price reaches a certain stage, now more people are showing interest. Now to understand this, right, you have to understand a typical traditional auction, how it looks like. Think about a very simple auction. How many of you have seen an auction uh, in the movies or something like that? Winston is asking, is it an NVD? Of course, it is not normal variation day. It is a normal day only. You might see in uh, auction the movies. Think about that in a simple example. A Sachin's bat is coming uh, for an auction. Sachin's bat, a famous celebrity bat, Sachin's bat, probably an MRF bat. Sachin's MRF bat. Is coming to the auction. So initially the auctioneer is saying like, uh, the bat is valued at uh, 10,000 rupees. Right? So the auction starts at 10,000 rupees. Let's say auction start at this price. Auction start at this price. Now when the auction is coming and announcing, imagine that all the people are uh, willing to purchase the bat. The auctioneer is coming and saying like the price of the bat starts at 10,000 rupees. Now what will happen is like now many people will be thinking what is the value of the bat? Now some people might be thinking like I, anyways it's an MRF bat. If I go and get it outside maybe I can get it at a very cheaper rate. Maybe something like 7,000 or 8,000. Something like that I can, I can get it at that price. Why I have to, should I really have to spend 10,000 or something like that? Now some people like they might think like, oh, it's Sachin's bad. Anyways, uh, uh, I love Sachin, so I would like to uh, buy Sachin's bad. Maybe even if it is coming to uh, 20,000 also, I'm willing to buy. So they are uh, moderate Sachin fans. So one among them uh, might be a hardcore Sachin fan. So he might be willing to buy at any cost. I'm, I'm, I'm taking this bad. This is going to be a prestigious issue for me, no matter what, even if it is one lakh, two lakh also. Let me see, let, let the auction goes. Let me keep on uh, increase the auction price. So there'll be a hardcore fan of Sachin. Not everybody is going to be a hardcore fan of Sachin, but probably in the TV channels, you would have seen uh, true hardcore fan of Virat Kohli, true hardcore fan of uh, uh, what? So true hardcore fan of Sachin's. So they don't have any idea about value, but they are hardcore fans. They don't, they value only the product. They don't value the price. They, for them, price doesn't matter. You know, right, that is the kind of people who can build bubbles in the stock markets. So think about that. All of a sudden, one guy was raising his hand and he's saying like, uh, he's quoting like 20,000 20, uh, 20, rupees. 20,000 rupees. Suddenly, a guy was coming and raising the price. Now, everybody's attention is on the price because price started going. Auction started uh, moving up. Now this motivates the crowd to come up with an auction. Now, now people will be slowly coming up with like 24,000, 25,000, 26,000. And the price will start slowly, it will start rising. So the auction will be keep going like what? 20,000 will become uh, 23,000. Let's say I'm just putting some numbers over here. 23,000. And suddenly more and more uh, find value you can find over here around this level around this 20,000 level, you can find the price will be spending more time over here because more people are interested in those levels. So slowly it goes to 24,000 and then 25,000 and 26,000, 27,000. But after some time, you can see that as the auction keeps going up and up and up, at some point in time, it will start reaching something like uh, 35,000. Now, half of the crowd is not willing to buy because uh, they think maybe 10,000 rupees, but I don't want to pay such a huge money. But half of the crowd is still willing to trade, still willing to bid for that bat. Now the auction will be speeding up. The auction will go like the 35,000 will become 70,000, 70,000. Now slowly people will start losing interest in that bat because it's getting expensive now. Price is going beyond the value. Probably most of the people would have been valued in this band. Most of the people thought like maybe if it is anywhere between 20,000 to 30,000, 
I am willing to take that bat to my home. I'm willing to pay for that. I'm, pay, I'm willing to pay premium because it is such and such. But this is most of the people. They are not hardcore fans, right? But if you look into the hardcore fans, they are like, let's see. I am going to take this bat at no matter what at any cost. They don't bother about value. They bother about only taking bat, taking that back, back home. So now the auction is going like uh, two lakhs, three lakhs, five lakhs, ten lakhs, fifteen lakhs, twenty lakhs, twenty-five lakhs, and finally one gentleman, only one gentleman at the top, is ready to buy at twenty-seven lakhs rupees. So that is how the auction ends. The auction ends because the last buyer. Till the last buyer is there, auction keeps on going up. But this is market, right? This is market. We don't have only buyers alone. We have sellers also. So the thumb rule is: market keeps on the price keeps on pushing up. They keep on pushing up and up and up till the last buyer is there, aggressively participating in the markets. The buyers stop buying at the top, and sellers will take control. Sellers will keep on pushing the price down as long as the last seller is there. They are showing their aggressiveness. Once the aggressiveness of the seller is lessened up compared to the buyers, auction will again controlled by the buyers. Again, sellers again, buyers again, sellers and buyers. Now this is what we call as a two-way auction process. In a two-way auction process, auction is controlled not only by the buyers but also the sellers also. But at any at any given time, one guy is going to be dominant. you can see this kind of two way auction process in commodities gold silver i mean cryptos you name any trading instrument the buyers and sellers are going to keep on fight among each other they're going to fight for the dominance at any given time one crowd is always going to win either buyer is going to win price is going to move in their direction or seller is going to win and price seller is price is going to move in their direction that's why i'm quoting this is this is the basic foundation for market profile so if you know this concept yes this is what this is one of the reason why the buyers and sellers fighting they are finally fighting for the value as i said there more people are uh, willing to purchase around 20000 to 35000 right that is what more people are finding value in this range so that's the importance of the value more people are willing to pay money now who are the one who is willing to pay money do we really care about it see if i am going to buy like 5 lots or 10 lots of nifty futures Or some hundred shares of Reliance. If I'm going to invest, I don't need to bother about value. I want to buy, so I'll go and buy. That is how we retailers do. But think about the traders who are. I'm talking about smart money. I'm talking about the big traders who are dealing with big sizes. They are concerned about value. They have to. The primary reason is because they are dealing with big sizes and they cannot punch in one single uh, orders. So if there are days. right from the morning till the end they will be keep on buying imagine fi is a buying like thousands of crores like right? 70000 crores 80000 crores like in a month they have been uh, keep on buying in that kind of quantum you have seen that in the last couple of days fi is had bought in the month of august like some 60000 crores or something like that they they bought if they are buying they have to present in the market throughout the day they cannot buy at one single price alone remember this this is the most thing important thing people are confusing themselves so they absolutely they have to bother about value because otherwise my cost will go higher my transaction cost we call it as a transaction cost it will go higher right so one of the important reason for the value area formation is what institutions right if there are no institution then there won't be any sideways market at all right all the breakout trading works in a nutshell it is normal variation day definitely traders will love this because first half the market will be balancing market balances in the first half a lot of accumulation distribution all those things happen in the first half but second half maybe sometimes a news would have been fired in the market sometimes there could have been some positive news would have been occurred or negative news would have been occurred because of that market takes a directional move over here now who makes the directional move some higher time frame trader it could be driven by maybe long term traders it could be driven by short term traders also or at times it could be driven by in, in intermediate traders also why they do that because there are some some sense of urgency was there in the morning there was no sense of urgency 
those who are accumulating, they are accumulating. Who those who are distributing, they are distributing very slowly, steadily. There is no disturbance in the market. Markets are doing its regular job. Remember, I am talking about a regular job. Regular job is what accumulation and distribution in the markets. One of the primary reason why the market goes sideways. And suddenly, a news was happening. A news, or maybe some uh, somebody who is having some secret information, or somebody is having some better information, or some informed traders. They are anticipating some news. So ahead of that, they, they want to buy it in a hurry. So that is why they keep on ramping up. Now, sometimes it can also happen because if there is a too much of shots are there, suddenly a news happens, all the shots will be covered in the system. So it can happen because of multiple reasons. It can be happening because of, but it's mostly a news-based trigger. Or some sensitive news somebody is having and they started ramping up because of that other traders, they don't have any choice but to tag along with them. So that's more of a normal variation day. But as I said, uh, this kind of normal day, normal variation day, if you ask me, normal day is what generally we'll be seeing majority of the time, normal day. Maybe 50% of the time, we're going to see normal days. Maybe another 15% of the time, we're going to see normal variation day. So put together, normal and normal variation day, put together itself, it happens 65% of the times. 65% of the time, we're going to see this normal, normal variation day. Mostly directional. Still directional, but still balanced. The only difference is normal day will be balanced at the center. Whereas normal variation day will be balanced at one side, other side is going to be an imbalance. Second half is going to be more of an imbalance, either on the upside or it can be on the downside. Then we have trend day. Trend day is one of the most important day. In fact, last Friday, Bank Nifty had a trend day. Continuously, market will be keep on moving in one direction. That is what we call as a one time framing. Continuously, a market keeps on making higher lows if the market start keep moving on the upper side, or continuously it start making uh, lower uh, highs if the market start sliding down. Not even a single TPO, maybe one TPO if they can break. Maybe I'll show you last Friday how Bank Nifty structure was. You might pretty much surprised to see that information. I'll, I'll show you the. Uh, bank Nifty charting activity. I was on last Friday. Why I'm saying that last Friday is a trend day. I'll also show you in uh, USDNR as well. When the price would breached 80 plus level, it was a very clean trend day. Now look at the price action over here. This is letter A. The price started sliding right from the open. Price started sliding. So this was the very first high, and then it started making lower highs when at B period. So B period is here, right? The B period is over here. So here is the B period. You can see the B period. C period was here. D period, only once it broke in the one time framing, it started coming down. Right? So one time framing got broken a little bit, not much. And then uh, E period was one time, it's down. F period was down. G period was down. Uh, throughout the day, you can feel that the price kept on one time framing no matter what. D period also went down. H period also went down. Yes, I period went a little bit up, but it went down majorly. And then J period was down. K period was down. L period was down, but it, it got a little bit pulled back. M period also a little, got a little bit pulled back. Even though it's not a perfect trend day, but the majority of the day slided down. Tone of the day also ended down. Overall tone for the day right, ended negatively. It means many traders, they end up going in a very bearish tone for that particular day. If I try to explain from the sentiment perspective. So it's a, I would say like it's more of a trend day. It's more of a trend day, but it's also more of an emotional day. The reason is we are also seeing a lot of anomalies. Last Friday, we talked about anomalies, right? Well, last Sunday, last Saturday, I think, we talked about anomalies. Here, we're seeing a lot of small, small holes in the structure. You can see that these are emotions. A lot of emotional sellers are there. But along with that, I'm also seeing a very big money flow is happening from the system as well. So this is a nature, we call this as a poor structure. So last two days, the structure was poor, but still, still, what is happening over here? The last two days, we are seeing a poor structure. See, immediate auction is down. Immediately, auction is down. But whom I am also competing along with them, poor structures. Even though last two days, last two days continuously, sector-wise, if you are seeing that all the sectors are going up, majority of the sectors are down in the last two days. 
intensive selling happened in nifty intensive selling happened in bank nifty almost last two days right bank nifty has fallen like from almost like 1400 points a little more than 1400 points market had fallen in the last two days alone the last two days all the sector was negative institutional selling was there along with that but the, the way the selling right it's not a rational selling a rational selling is what distributing there is no distribution at all continuously aggressive selling so when the such kind of intensive aggressive selling is there i'm also seeing a poor structure it also makes the markets the shorts to some extent will get weaker so when i say it's getting weaker maybe a fresh shorts which is happening on a monday morning if at all any fresh shorts is going to happen then one have to be very skeptical about that the reason is the markets are getting more uh, Uh, more and more sellers selling activity is happening yes long term activity is coming and selling but more and more anomaly is also selling over here because uh, that makes that market is getting more and more emotional so some kind of an emotional connectivity is happening here and sellers are getting more emotional sellers are chasing the price sellers are chasing the momentum price keep going down so more and more sellers are coming and doing uh, selling down we know that right that is not a regular market activity market ba does balancing majority of the time So, what is the key takeaway here from the last two days? Does it means like Monday market will crash? So, let me tell you frankly, such kind of things are not not. It's not new. Yes, market may crash also, but what are the chances that market may crash? Uh, maybe market may open gap down. That is, which is almost given over here. Like last Friday, uh, U.S. market was negative, Indian market was negative, almost every global market ended negative. Right? Not only stock markets, commodities got butchered, crypto got butchered. European currencies got butchered. Right, almost the panic was already there. Maybe that panic definitely is going to reflect at the open. The chances are very high. But after that, what is the scenario? After that, what is going to happen? That really matters. After that, maybe let's say assume that another two hundred points gap down is happening on Nifty on Monday, or maybe another four hundred points gap down is happening on uh, uh, Bank Nifty. But after that, what what kind of traders will be? Am, am I going to see? Am I going to see some rational traders, or am I going to see more and more emotional traders? Maybe if something happens on Saturday, Sunday, maybe something like let's say some more tensions, some geopolitical tensions are happening, or some uh, Russia is doing something else, so tensions are increasing. Maybe in that case, maybe the market might get more and more nervous to the downside. But if it is a regular rational market, I'll tell you what will happen. Market will. this kind of activity will make the markets to go short to too short so if the market is getting short to too short the chances of bouncing back increases a lot the chances of bouncing back increases a lot the last friday right i was having a conversation with one of my friend so uh, he is kind of an investor but he is trying to learn trading so he was saying like um, he seen that it it stocks are going down because after the fed policy announcement it most of the it stocks were got butchered after seeing the it stocks now everybody would have have that natural thought can i go and short infi can i go and short tcs because it's very easy thing to do right let me tell you this is something god we call as an rational it's not a rational thinking it's a narrow thinking anybody can think like that and almost everybody could be thinking like that only or everybody in the markets are thinking the same way if everybody is going to think in the same way you know right not everybody is going to take uh, back home money you know what happened in infi was something very interesting may later on infi uh, infi doesn't uh, move on the upside first then only it started coming down remember everything if everybody is going to think in the same way that is why the market does the exact opposite if everybody is thinking that market is going to crash it may happen once in a blue moon but majority of the time what will happen whenever you have that feel oh my god is this the market is going to break when you are when you are feeling that nervousness when such a big gap down is happening you would have seen that many times market reversed up we are also seen in the previous session also why people have that kind of anxiety people have a lot of anxiety so they get trapped most of the times they don't have a, they don't have a, any idea many many times they will be thinking like why my stop loss is getting hunted because their their location their entry most of the time they are entering at an uh, unrealistic price most likely they are entering at an uh, price 
either above the valley area or below the valley area, mostly on the opposite side. When emotions are running high, they are coming and entering into the markets. Those are very, very bad trade locations. Maybe, maybe if you are on the opposite side, it's, you might be enjoying the trade. But if you are uh, uh, buying uh, at the gap up, very big gap up, or buying at the very big gap down, uh, most of the time one could be end up in a disadvantage. All right, so let's quickly look into the other types. So trend day is something which is uh, these kind of days, right? Long-term players will be there. Throughout the day, money will be pumped up. Throughout the day, sectors will be keep on going up. And not only that, other time frame traders, they don't have any choice but to go and trade with them. Trying to trade against them, if the markets are one-time framing, something which is very dangerous. Many traders, they lost huge money by trading against the trend day, by looking into the overbought signals or oversold signals. Many people get into such kind of a trap. Then comes a double distribution day. Double distribution day is also one form of a trend day. More or less these kind of days also long-term commitment will be very high. Money flow will be very high. Most likely these kind of days are considered as a smart days most of the times. Um, so smart, if you are seeing a trend day or a double distribution day in a casual markets with no news, sometimes with no news, you'll be seeing this kind of days. Or when there is an extreme negative news is happening, you'll be start seeing like market will be keep going continuously, they'll be keep going up. No reason. And you'll be wondering such a negative economic tension, but why these kind of days are happening? Uh, those are the places long-term players, they love to accumulate because those are the places many people will be willing to come and sell because the economy is weak. Probably uh, China might attack uh, Taiwan or maybe Ukraine might be going for Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine and Russia might uh, start a world war. So a lot of people might be willing to sell around those levels because things are not going good. Markets, recent market activity is not going good. So people might be having that mindset to short the markets. But what in reality what will happen is like it, it, trigger, it, it provides more liquidity to the long-term players. So long-term players will be continuously keep on buying and uh, the other traders will be finding as an opportunities to sell. So they might be thinking like, oh, markets are rising. So let me go and sell. I might get a better price. But at the end of the day, they, they will be losing it, everything to the short, uh, I mean, smart money traders. So trend day, if it's happening, extreme negative sentiment is happening. But uh, when extreme negative uh, sentiment conditions, economy is weak, job data is not going good, political instability is there. Despite that, market keep on going up and up and up and up. It is only one reason. Long-term commitments are coming into the markets. Very, very important place. But, but in, in terms of frequency, in a month, if you're getting one trend day, that is more than enough. That is what market does. Not every month we're going to see and uh, uh, not every day is not going to be a trend day. But generally, people expectation is a trend day. But trend day happens how many times? In a month? Only once. Or very rarely, we can see two trend days in a month. That is super rare, I would say that. Three trend days in a month? i never seen one such thing. Maybe if at all something is getting crazy, people are so crazy about the market, maybe it can happen. Like everybody is crazy. Long-term traders are crazy. Short-term traders are crazy. Intermediate traders are crazy. Only in that case, we can see... Uh, Continuous three trend days are in a month. In a month, I'm talking about that. So trend days are very rare. And so the double distribution days also. If you're seeing one double distribution in a month or one trend day in a month, that is more than, uh, that is what generally, that's the frequency we might get most of the times. So 5% is what I would say, like out of 100 profiles you're seeing, among that only five profiles are trend day. Why? Because trend day happens only once. Not every day the long-term players are keep on going to push up the markets. Neutral day. Neutral day is also one form of a uh, balanced structure. Right? So uh, uh, books can say many things about OTM activity, but it is more of a uh, rational trading day only. Why? The reason is it does a clean uh, profile distributed structure. If you, you, if you see the uh, distribution curve, it looks something like this. Of course, you can see it from the volume profile itself. A very rational day. It means what? Accumulation distributions are very common in these kind of days. Neutral days are very much famous for accumulation and distribution. So when accumulation distribution is happening, long-term players will not move the markets, uninformed traders, and uh, some small traders who are li having a little bit of muscle power to move the market, they'll be aggressively playing the markets. Traders will be playing, and institutions will be slowly accumulating or slowly distributing. 
and they'll be finding more business around these levels, around the value area. Right. Now next comes the neutral day extreme. This is also balanced the profile. Most likely it is, we call this kind of a spike. It is market will be mostly balanced, more crowded activity happens. But last one hour, you will be seeing a super elongation happening in one direction. Price last hour, you'll be seeing a momentum happening in the markets. Uh, most of the time it is more of a trap than it is gonna be a genuine buying. So many times uh, people get trapped into this kind of market activity. So neutral extreme day is like something like, uh, it's an indication that maybe you have to be a little cautious. If in case we are trading in that direction, it's fine because it's very easy to trade the breakouts. Breakouts do happen. Yes, breakout traders make money provided they are uh, timely booking the profit. And the more they delay, chances are there like they could lose their whatever the profit they gained. Maybe next day or some subsequent day, they could be losing and they might be living under hope that market will again bounce back. But many a times it turns out to be a trap. Very few places it could be a genuine uh, price actions, but majority of the time, maybe I would say like 75% uh, of the time, it is more of a trap because wherever the momentum traders are showing up just like that, uh, trading looks easier. Now, those are the places the trick has been made in the markets. Emotional traders, they get stuck in and they see the price and they get trapped because the price was breaking out. They think like the market will be moving up. Maybe intraday they might be profitable, but maybe next day or subsequent day, they may not be not profitable. So if at all there is a new day extreme, you have to be very careful about it. So we also call it as a spike. So spikes are mostly last one hour of price action over here. And then P-shape profile, very important structure. A P-shape profile, generally the price action will be happening from the bottom to the up, and then the balancing will be happening at the top. Right? It's most likely related to fresh money. If at all more and more value is happening on the upper side, which confirms that new money is flowing into the markets. So P-shape profile uh, generally determine new money. Um, so generally institutional money is coming in. Generally you can see that P-shape profile and more values start building on the upper side. You can see that it's more of a B-shape profile structure. And P-shape, uh, B-shape, right? It's, it's more of a B-shape over here. Price opens at the top, drops down, and it does go sideways over here. Opposite of P-shape. In a P-shape, what happens? Price goes up and it does sideways price action. This is more of a P-shape profile. In a B-shape, we have a very lengthier stem and the second half, it is more of a sideways price action. Maybe first one hour or first one and a half hours, market will be trendier. The rest of the days, market will be slowly start rotating at the lower balance. Here, we'll be having a very clear stem, very clear stem over here. And followed by that, a very nice, clean, uh, balanced rotation happens in the second, uh, the lower part. So B-shape profile generally represents that uh, it's mostly 75% of the time, 75 to 80% of the time. It is more of an uh, old money. They are closing down their positions. Very, very rarely it ha happens with uh, positive open interest. So if the B-shape profile and positive open interest, maybe you can say like it is fresh money selling in the markets. So generally P-shape or B-shape is uh, used to evaluate whether it's a new money or not. Not every P-shape profile is a new money, but if I'm seeing a P-shape profile, followed by that, I'm also seeing a value area uh, forming higher. Those are indications that a new money is there present in the markets. More and more new traders are coming and in invoking positions. Maybe market might be in a new territory. New traders are willing to trade that particular counter, willing to trade that particular instrument. So naturally, it is mostly driven by um, in institutions at times. And uh, this B shape could be driven by short term traders also. Sometimes short term traders, they drive it. Sometimes it is more of a news based liquidation. So it can be anybody. Right? But ultimately, mostly it is done by when inventory is getting long to too long. Generally, profit booking happens. If profit booking happens, you will be finding this kind of B shaped structure very often in the markets. All right, so these are the different ways of structure. Now you can understand what is the underlying meaning behind that, why some certain profiles are so important and why certain profiles are very less in frequency and why certain profiles repeat very often. As I said, the balance structure, the end of the day. So which are the balance structure? Even B-shape profile is also a balance structure. B-shape is also, first half it is trendier, second half it is going to be balancing. Neutral day is a balanced structure. Maybe last minute, last half an hour, we'll be seeing a trendier price action, but still balance happens there also. 
and uh, neutral day center also you're gonna see an uh, balanced price action price try to spike on both the sides but the uh, price will act like a magnet price comes repeatedly at the center price also go closer at the center you can see that the price will be breaking the first one hour high also will be broken low also get broken and price try, try to trade on both the sides price finally settles down at the center that's why it's called as a neutral day center and it is also mostly a neutral day structure mostly accumulation distribution happen in this band and double distribution day, it's a trendier day. Mostly, it's a, it's not a clean trend day. It's almost similar to a trend day. Double distributions and triple distributions are. And then a trend day, mostly directional. So these are the two places we can find directional. And of course, another place that we can find direction is like a normal variation day. Here also you can find directions. But as I said, these directions only contribute only to the 15% of the profiles. Remainder, all the profiles are normal day, neutral day, neutral day center. So means what? Most of the time we're going to space. If I'm seeing a normal regular day, the chances are very higher that markets are going to go sideways. It's very casually it's going to happen. So that way we can uh, position ourselves in a better manner. But finally, we'll go and uh, finish the session with the market outlook. You remember last week what we had spoken about it in Nifty and Bank Nifty. There are two things we talked about. That one is we told that the market had formed a top. Uh, I also reasoned why the market had formed a top. It's G2 high. It's a G2 high at a major swing high. Uh, if it is happening, it's a major top. This is the same form of top. It happened in US market also, ES Mini. Like in like we have Nifty, they have ES Mini. Uh, they also topped out with a G2 pattern. It's a one form of a top pattern. We concluded that the G2 higher major swing high is a potential top pattern, which is what we discussed in the last week session also. And then uh, the view that we had is like, uh, we said like upside, there was some weaker references there. So maybe the market might try to take an upside activity. Followed by that, we might start coming down. So there are two important levels we talked about it. One is 17 440 level it got taken down last friday right uh, last friday only it got cleared after the fed announcement the clearance happened and more or less one more final level what i am watching is like uh, 17 uh, the current month low the current month low is also a weaker low so that's a it's a dominant buyer which happened in the past so i'm expecting ultimately Probably at the Monday opening itself, there is a very high chance like we might be uh, taking out the 17, 250 level. That's ultimate downside target I'm having. Uh, maybe uh, after that, the market might start recovering back is what I'm just thinking. Probably we might be, uh, after that breakdown, maybe we might start pulling back towards 17, 650 kind of level. This is what my expectation is. Um, that's how I'm just positioning myself. There are a couple of weaker levels, which is there around the 17, 650 like kind of an, uh, one of the plays which I've been uh, noticing over here. So the M period low was a little bit visual. It's kind of an, a little bit of dominant selling was happening over there. So this is the level I'm just thinking that. So these are the two levels I'm just focusing on over here for the next week. So maybe when, the, when there is going to be a panic and if the panic is recovering back, remember only if it is recovering back, then only I will try to trade towards 17, 650 levels. And of course, next week is also more important because next weekend, we are also having an RBI policy announcement uh, starting up. So I think uh, ahead of the RBI policy announcement, we might be getting back to 17650. And later on, market will decide whether it's going to be a, from there, it's going to be a short or not. But I'm just thinking that now the anxiety of short is increasing. So what I'm thinking is going to be like maybe Monday, Monday or Tuesday, we might be start bottoming out and later on, uh, the recovery might start coming in. Maybe... Uh, we can also think about something like this. Like maybe market goes down and then come back again, try to smash it down again, come back. And uh, now it, it's going to be a smooth rally towards 1760 levels. Maybe one or two days of frustration, settlement period. And then uh, we might uh, find a bottom and then we might temporarily rally towards 1760. And later on, we might, we have to see further information how the markets are shaping up. So this is what I'm just expecting in the next upcoming uh, days. And Friday, coming Friday is where the RBA policy announcement is. So ahead of that, maybe we might be positioned towards 17 to 50 levels. And same thing with uh, Bank Nifty also. Bank Nifty, in fact, last Friday, even though uh, we had uh, seen an uh, 
aggressive selling in the last couple of days last friday selling was like kind of a uh, short term traders they come and dominated so more or less the downside i'm expecting an ab poor low so that is what i've been traded also uh, almost uh, we've been trading towards ab poor low since wednesday onwards maybe i'll show you so we have a slack community called uh, uh, marketcalls.slack.com so it's more of a kind of a private trading community where we talk about the market activity so right from the wednesday onwards wednesday september 21st onwards in bank nifty so wednesday itself we started focusing towards ab poor low because high confidence is happening so bank nifty bn up means bank nifty bank nifty futures once again focus shift towards ab poor low so means wednesday when the wednesday was happening we are literally trading at uh, where we been trading around 41500 but where was the focus the focus has been shifted towards the ab poor low short term focus shifted from here 41400 levels towards 39300 which is like 2000 points of price action not only uh, wednesday but also the thursday also the bearish view continued thursday also we looked into that so view positionally remains bearish that's what uh, bnf is looking more weaker than nifty means bank nifty could more crash more uh, this is when this is on the expiry day thursday and uh, so expectation is faster down move towards 39300 which is nothing but the ab poor low and ultimately finally we are expecting certain things to happen and hence expectation of the faster down move in the bank nifty so we have a valid reason why a faster down move has to happen in the markets and why price has to move now towards ab poor low uh, we try to build a context using the market profile right so and then finally almost uh, like even though the tone was like last friday also last friday was the view like uh, even though too much of poor structures in nifty so maybe the first uh, friday emotions reflecting on monday maybe later on buying pressure might start coming in as i said the buying pressure might start happening from maybe on uh, post monday or post tuesday the buying pressure might start happening anytime so it may be monday it may be tuesday somewhere the market will settle down uh, on a before uh, tuesday and then market will start uh, ramping up from there towards 17 650 kind of levels so that is what the expectation i'm having based on whatever the Uh, informations that i am seeing from the profile structure all right so i'll say thank you for coming by and attending the session i hope you learned something new about it uh, if in case you you feel like you learned something new about market profile and market profile structures uh, please go to the course section and give us uh, a reasonable comments our uh, feedbacks and testimonials it will be very helpful for us to fine tune maybe should i have to spend more time or do you feel like it's a very lengthier session uh, please go back and comment it out so that we can hear it so that we can optimize ourselves that will be helping us that's going to help us to uh, reach you in a better manner with more efficient contents so i'll say thank you once again for coming by and uh, thank you again uh, have a nice day see you next week with more interesting contents thank you